We're in Miami, Florida. It's 1 a.m. and at a downtown apartment complex, security cameras record a man wandering around the parking lot. He's carrying what looks like a gas can. One of the building's tenants, Miguel Quintero, is outside getting some air. He doesn't recognize the man. Living there five years, I did know every single one of the neighbors. He walked by and I just knew something was up. The stranger walks off, but minutes later, he's back. This time outside the door of an apartment. He unscrews his can, pours the contents on the doormat, and then sets it alight, and then runs away. Inside the apartment asleep is Susie Rios and her two young granddaughters, who she's babysitting for the night. I'm one of those people that when I go to sleep, I hear nothing. As Susie's door starts to burn, it triggers the smoke alarm. I never even thought it was the fire alarm. As I'm walking down the stairs, all of a sudden, I see the downstairs full of smoke. There was no rear exit. So my thoughts were, OK, what do I do? How do I get the girls out? I mean, it was just like all hell literally broke loose. God willing, there's a neighbor out there. Someone's out there. Susie's prayers are answered. Her neighbor, Miguel Quintero, has seen the flames and rushes to her door. My first thought is, I have to pull this fire away enough from the door so that I can get to the door and bang on the door, ring the doorbell to wake everybody in that unit up. And then my next thought was, of course, let's go get them. Incredibly, having just saved his neighbors, Miguel then chases down the arsonist. He can hear my footsteps, and you see the fear in him when he hears me coming, because I'm coming in fast, and I'm a big locomotive coming towards him. So when he turns around, I see his eyes get real big, and he's just like, why? And from there is when I jump on top of him, and I know I'm not going to hurt him too bad, but I'm definitely going to do enough so that he knows he's not going to go anywhere. Miguel uses his college wrestling skills to restrain the man. So I put his arm behind his back and, you know, kept my arm around his neck. Not enough to choke him out, but enough to have control. I finally get the door open. And Miguel starts screaming at me, call 911. He set the fire, call 911. It fired him. I think time slowed down for me in that moment. It felt like forever for them to get there, but when I look back, it was within minutes. So they handcuffed him and then, you know, took him away and just kind of shook my hand and did a good job here. As far as a weapon, I didn't think about it. I just knew I wanted to get him and bring him to justice. No motive was ever given for his actions. But 23-year-old Luis Menendez was charged with arson and attempted murder. He was found guilty and sentenced to five years. Ever since the terrifying incident, Susie and her family can't thank their good Samaritan neighbor enough. My first reaction was that I need to have a statue erected to Miguel. I need to have a halo placed on his head. He was our godsend, he is our angel. And I look back on the footage, I'm just like amazed that we're here. I'm here, most importantly, that my two baby granddaughters are here. There's nothing in this world that could repay him for what he did for me and my family. <sighs> Sorry, just give me a second. There's not enough words to say thank you, really. I want to be a good neighbor. I want to know my neighbors, and I want them to know as different as we are, because God, we are different. We want the same things. You never know when you're going to need each other. They could need you, you could need them. And I just want them to know who I am and that I got their backs. And what's great is I know they have my back. <laughs> Next up, we're in Orlando, Florida. A man staggers to his neighbor's door, gasping for breath. 
He's middle school teacher Billy Bass, alone working from home, and he needs help fast. I thought to myself, you know, my only hope is to run to my neighbors. Billy's neighbor and friend of 14 years is Karen Aranda. Luckily, she's at home with her family. I've known Karen and Junior for just a long time. Kids went to school together. We were sitting around the table and we heard this pounding knock on the door. It was actually scary. And when I opened the door and I saw Billy's face, immediately I knew that there was something wrong with him. It was just like a, a, an instinct. I turned him around. I wrapped my arms around him. When I pushed into his stomach the first time, nothing happened. So I squeezed him for the second time. And a big old piece of meat, I mean, it was a good size of meat. It flew out like a cork out of a bottle, about three or four feet in the grass. Get water, bring water. Hey, call 911. No, no. No? I get Karen has cleared the blockage by performing abdominal thrusts, also known as the Heimlich maneuver. The relief of just having air was something you take for granted. I, I could breathe. My son said, oh, you know, it came out. And then he turned around. I knew that he was okay. Like his, his blood started flowing and he started breathing. We hugged each other and I, I was just like very, very emotional because I couldn't imagine what could have happened if I wouldn't have opened the door. At that moment, you think, wow, you know, I could have died. You know, somebody that was trained in CPR, first aid, makes all the difference in the world. Curly, the, the uh, Latina Wonder Woman, she was so strong. I'm in the dental field, I'm an office manager, and you have to be um, CPR certified. After his ordeal, Billy resolves to take a first aid course himself. I am YMC certified trained now. I want to make sure that I'm prepared as well to help my neighbor. And it's made the neighbors even better friends as they promote first aid awareness together. I borrowed beer from her before, I borrowed tools, but this time she saved my life, so it was the ultimate, you know, neighbor, you know, gratitude. She's my angel. <laughs> 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 It's a quiet afternoon in the subdivision of Las Vegas. This homeowner and her neighbors have just noticed a dog walking off leash in the street. I got him. She calls the wandering pit bull over, and he seems friendly enough. It's not mine. Her smaller dog, named Max, comes out to say hello with a customary dog butt sniff. Without warning, the pit bull snaps and tries to bite down on Max. The homeowner desperately tries to keep Max out of the pit bull's jaws, even putting herself at risk of being bitten. Max is less than half the attacking dog's size. A single bite could prove to be fatal. Suddenly, a hero appears. Max, get back! A package delivery driver puts herself between the attacker and its victims giving them an opening to run safely inside. No! No! Thanks to this delivery driver, Max and his owner escape with only minor cuts and scratches, proving that not all friendly neighborhood heroes wear capes. Some wear delivery vests. You're a bad dog! Now to Toronto, Canada, where a man is doing the dishes when his attention is drawn to neighbors in another building. Yo, they're looking for their cat. A ginger tomcat has strayed onto a neighboring balcony and is now stuck. No. No. <gasps> Yo. What the f is he doing? No. His neighbor opposite is risking his own life to rescue his cat. One misstep and he could plunge 80 feet to his death. Now for the return. If the cat struggles, they could both be unbalanced. Thankfully, the cat is placid, 
And miraculously, this neighbor's reckless and ill-advised rescue effort doesn't end in disaster. This next story shows just how far some neighbors will go to help one another at any cost. Fresno, California. It's the middle of the day, and an electrical fire has engulfed this house in a matter of minutes. Neighbors turn their garden hoses on the blaze, but it has no effect. As a witness films the terrifying ordeal on her cell phone, and with the fire department still minutes away, the already dire situation suddenly becomes drastically worse. Your dad is still in there? Your dad is in there? I called 911. No, there's a man in there. An explosion from inside the house sends concerned neighbors running from the deadly inferno with an elderly man still trapped inside. No, there's a man inside! As the flames grow higher and the smoke thickens, it looks as if all hope is lost. This is Poppy! Oh my God! Big Dad! But keep an eye on the man in the blue baseball hat. He's about to do something you won't believe. Suddenly, the hero in the blue baseball hat emerges, carrying the man who was trapped in the house over his shoulder. Oh, thank God! Oh, thank God! Here he is. Is this him right here? Everybody's down. Okay. Oh my God! Where's the fire department? I called 911. You're okay. But as quickly as he appears, the hat-wearing Good Samaritan is suddenly gone without a trace. Neighbors eventually learn it is one of their own, Tom Artiaga, who performed this miraculous rescue. I was on my way to go do a side job and had seen an apartment complex that was on fire. A uh, lady screaming that their dad was in the building. People were yelling for uh, help, so I stopped and helped. Oh, thank God. Everybody's out. Here he is. Is this him right here? Everybody's out. When I got him out and I put him down, yeah, he's still struggling a little bit to breathe. And at that time, I just told the girl, your dad's here. And I left. After saving his neighbor, Tom left the scene because he didn't want to be lauded as a hero. The events of that day still have an effect on him. Well, that day after I came home from doing the side work, I never told my wife, never told none of my family. Uh, my brother called us, called us up that night, and uh, that's when he told my wife and told 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 my kids that. The Fresno Fire Department arrived and eventually put out the fire, and the man who'd been trapped inside was taken to a nearby hospital and treated for smoke inhalation before being released. I don't think I'm a hero. I just, you know, I help out people. Uh, you know, that's, that's in my heart. I just did what was quick instinct for a normal person to have the courage to do that. Well, my wife just said, how come I didn't say nothing? And I go, I didn't want all the fame. I didn't want to be on camera. We could all use a few more neighbors like Tom Artiaga. <laughs> Woodland Hills, Los Angeles resident, 54-year-old Russell Wolf is driving to brunch. And at first, he doesn't think anything of the guy in the white shirt walking his dog. But then he's shocked by what he witnesses. A neighbor he's never seen before vandalizes a local fruit stand, so he goes after the aggressor to investigate. What do you want? That's an illegal business in my neighborhood. I, I told them repeatedly to get the out of my neighborhood. Then you call the police. I you did. They didn't know. do anything. They're selling stolen fruit. What's your name? Two days later, when Russell is buying fruit from the stand with another local named Leslie, the irate neighbor returns, so Russell starts recording again. I think the strawberries look beautiful. Yeah. No, they might be beautiful, but they're stolen. Yeah, they are. They're not stolen. They have to have receipts to prove that they're not stolen. That's the law. This is, he has no business permit. If Let, my me kid, Let me finish. If my kid wants to put a lemonade stand here, are you going to do call him names? That's different. That's you're different. a bully. No, you're, you're, a you're an idiot. Russell has seen a fruit stand on this corner for the last six months. 
and he's not sure whether the owner has a legal street vending permit, but he is concerned by the aggressive attitude of his neighbor. Tomorrow I'm gonna spray WD-40 over all the Oh, come on, who are you? This is our neighborhood. It's my neighborhood, and I'm not gonna tolerate the You don't know what the you're talking about, bitch, and I'm not talking you to you You're calling me what? I'm calling you a bitch. Yeah, what, a are you gonna, what are you gonna do about it? I'm telling you, I'm talking to him. Where are the receipts? No. Where's your business permit? By now, this neighbor rager is attracting attention. You're Where's your help and safety? <laughs> you. But this seems to incense him even more. You know what? If we put up with this, next thing you know, you're gonna have a Tijuana four behind the church. Did you really and then over say the that? You're gonna have a dealer. A Max Street Corner, okay? It's called broken windows. You are. Yeah. You're absolutely a racist. You're a fool. Realizing he is not winning anyone over, the neighbor in purple decides to retreat, but not before he threatens to call the police. So call the police. Get to the police and then show us to the law. I don't have to show you anything. Do your homework. Oh, oh, I did, and I know who you are. And soon, the neighborhood learns not only who he is, but where he lives. A couple of weeks later, Russell, Leslie, and dozens of other neighbors surprise him with a protest rally outside his house. You're acting like a child. Yeah. And he reacts poorly. Spraying people with a hose is considered to be a criminal offense. So the police arrive, and he's arrested and charged with battery. Despite all the local support, the fruit seller, Tomas, decides to move to another neighborhood where he's selling his goods hassle-free. <laughs> Kenmore is a quiet residential community on the North Shore of Lake Washington, and it's where high school football standout and champion wrestler Hunter Gifford lives with his parents. It's a nice neighborhood. It's also a very close-knit. We always know each other and who our neighbors are. I'm certainly happy with um, who I have surrounding me. But just because a community is filled with good neighbors doesn't mean they don't have an occasional Grinch. Hunter is in the driveway with his friend Pat when he notices a strange man walk up to his neighbor Justin's house across the street. I knew they didn't live there and they didn't own those packages that they were taking. So immediately I was suspicious. Without hesitation, Hunter takes off after the thief on foot with his friend Pat following behind in a vehicle. He immediately started running. I knew the guy had to be stopped. I was worried that he could get away or that if I were to hurt him too bad, I could go to jail. At one point, I actually chased him through a chicken coop and the chase ended three blocks away from my house when I was able to trip him and shove him into a drainage ditch. I was dragging the package thief up to where he said the uh, packages were. The alleged porch pirate is taken into custody and charged with theft. Later, when his neighbor Justin arrives home, he realizes that the entire incident has been captured on a security camera. I have to admit, when I was watching the video and watching Hunter chase this guy up and down the street, I had a giant smile on my face. It was amazing to watch this play out. It was like an old Western. And it only happened because Hunter took a chance and, and he was brave to go out there and, and chase this guy down. Thank you, Justin. I knew you'd do the same for me as well. <laughs> you know? I hope so. Yeah.